A lot of people die in heart. That's just a fact of life here. But it ain't every day you hear someone's being killed by God. And not in the manner of them being struck by lightning or killed by a flood, neither. No, see, Brother Kindred was found alone in the church in the Elysian district, dead beneath the altar. Killed by God, that's what the church has been saying about the whole incident. Striking that fear into the souls of their righteous few. And now, as fate would have it, more and more people are dying in the Elysian district. Some people are saying, that's God too, and our rapture hath come. But some people are saying, there's a killer, stalking the streets of Elysian at night, hunting for any God-fearing individuals who dare stay out in the dark. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Heart, the State Within, a new actual play podcast presented by University d d My name is Blake Croft. I will be your game master and keeper for the evening, and it is my absolute privilege to introduce my other two players. Introduce yourselves. Hi, guys. I'm Katie. Um, some of you will probably recognize me from our Aurelia campaign. I played Kasha, and I'm very excited to be here playing a game with a very different tone and i'm jacob gonzalez i'll do full name because our lovely dm gave his full government uh so i forgot my last name don't worry about it (laughs) it's okay uh yeah you might uh recognize my voice from uh university and d katie and i had a lot of you know we talked a lot in that so we're back And they're back. This is session two. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, If you haven't listened to session one, then uh, go do do that because they're sequential. Um, But we are playing uh, Cult Divinity Lost, which is an RPG designed by, I'm not sure I said this in the first episode, but designed by Robin Lillianberg. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, This is a Powered by the Apocalypse system. So we, there are still some mechanics we haven't maybe fully touched on so you know if we get to anything new we're going to keep you in the loop as a reminder this is set in the world of heart which is in completely isolated city all by itself this session is going to take place in the inner districts where we get to see some of the inner workings of the city itself so uh, very excited for that all right everyone ready our story today begins in the Elysian district, in Hart. This is one of the outermost districts still within the city proper. It is a district that is a melting pot of different people from all throughout Hart. Recently, the Elysian district has not been sleeping. In this district, paranoia has begun to spread. It's believed that there is a serial killer on the loose, at least believed by some, because people have been dying. Anyone in the district who winds up alone may wind up dead. There's never more than one victim, never any witnesses, and never any wounds on the body, save for marks of suffocation. Even in their homes, nobody feels safe alone. So people in the district haven't been sleeping. They've been gathering in shelters and camps, keeping their eyes open, watching for when the killer strikes next. The Elysian District has also tightened their security. The Elysian District has the district police working extra shifts, and it is on one of these shifts, the first watch of the night, that we find 
a man is is he is he is he paranoid is he if there's a serial killer on the loose i am paranoid okay we find a man wandering through some of the back alleys of the elysian district watching waiting for any signs of a killer jacob could you go ahead and describe your character for us Yes, so I am uh, District Police Officer Ted Garner. I'm uh, probably what you would think if you think about like a noir uh, detective type. I have a fedora on. I have a long uh, trench coat over just uh, some... It was probably fancier clothing when I first got it, but now it's seen some wear and tear, so it's pretty... It's getting more casual as time goes by, but white shirt, some simple pants, a tie, uh, the hat and jacket kind of tie the whole look together. And um, I have a holster on my side with where my sidearm is, but no sign of any, uh, you know, pepper spray or baton or anything on me. I could probably blend in decently if I didn't want you to know I was a cop. Ted, you are walking now through a very slim alleyway. In fact, you have to turn your body going shoulder first to go through it. It is almost two walls touching, but you know from your experience of watching these streets that there is something on the other end. You are entering a place in the Elysian District called the Labyrinth. The Labyrinth is a sprawling an intricate maze of narrow alleyways, interconnected passages, and concealed courtyards that is at the center of the Elysian district. The Labyrinth's architecture is a mix of different styles and eras, with some sections dating back to the earliest days of Hart. There are some marble statues and more classical architecture, and others showing signs of recent modifications, modern graffiti, things of that nature. The walls are weathered, the cobblestone pathways are uneven, giving the place ancient and enigmatic ambiance. As you know right now, access to the labyrinth is not super straightforward. There are hidden entrances, concealed doors, and alleyways like the one that you are walking down now. You have to know your way around these streets to be able to find your way in here. Oftentimes, these hidden entrances are located within the district's buildings and businesses, and they grant passage to those who are in the know or force their way in. Some entrances are guarded secrets known only to specific groups or specific individuals that lead to places completely isolated from the rest of the labyrinth. You shimmy your way down this wall. The sun has set. The only thing lighting the other end is a dim lamp that sits on a a, a sconce somewhere past the corner of this alleyway. You shimmy through 20 feet of this cramped intersection until you emerge in a larger alleyway that you know is part of this this larger maze, this labyrinth. You have a hunch, Ted. You've heard of these deaths, these strange deaths that have happened over the course of a week. You have a hunch that if you will find anything on this night shift, it will be here in the labyrinth. You wander through the alleyways. You see the occasional passerby, never more than two or three, never any large groups. They don't look at you as you pass by, and you try your best not to look at them. You wander these alleyways for a little over an hour, until you find a perch, a courtyard, with a large marble statue in the center. A statue of a woman with wings protruding from her back, standing, looking majestic. You see that the base of this statue has been sprayed with blue and purple graffiti. But branching out from this courtyard, you see there are eight alleyways. And so you feel this is a pretty good way to get a feel for everything that's happening in the labyrinth at this hour of night. You stay there for maybe half an hour before you hear something that rises above 
the noisiness of parties or clubs or people talking, you hear something like a yelp or cry down one of the alleyways. Yeah, as soon as I hear that, I'm drawing my sidearm and running in that direction. Okay. You head in that direction, and it is not too far down this cobblestone before you turn left and see it in front of you. You see two figures. One of them is lying on the ground. You see this is a woman who looks to be of older age, but not old, older middle age, lying unconscious, maybe dead on the ground. Her arms sort of sprawled out. And above her, crouching over her, another figure. Uh, Katie, could you describe your character for us? I'd love to. Um, Yeah, so the woman you see crouching over this body, question mark. Uh, She's a a woman with fair skin and light hair. Um, She's got sharp features, cheekbones, and a pointed nose. Her hair is in uh, just a low bun on the back of her neck. Her dress is pretty normal. She wears a fitted knee-length skirt and a belted blouse. Uh, She's got sort of severe-looking glasses perched on the end of her nose. And slung over her shoulder is a bulging brown bag. And it looks like she's reaching to pull something from it. Okay. And her eyes just go wide seeing you at the end of the hall, or end of the alley. And what is her name, Katie? Unless I tell you, you don't that wanna... now. Oh, you don't have to. I will address you as Katie's character. <laughs> we we haven't met. <laughs> Katie, you, you know this woman. This is Nora Ridley. She is a 55-year-old woman who... You don't know too well, but you've met before this. You are crouched over her now, half in shock and half in search of something. But as you look up, you see this man rounding the corner, a sidearm reached out in front of him, pointing at you as you freeze in the alleyway. I can explain. Uh, as you say that, Officer Ted Garner, District Police, hands up and step away from the body. I turn and run as okay. fast as I can. As you look down and say this, you see that the body she is standing over has certainly not moved and is likely dead. She turns and runs down the alley, down a corner. What are you doing? They always fucking do this, and I'm just going to start bolting after. Okay. The labyrinth is not best suited for a racetrack. You see that there are bends in the walls, small, shrimpy alleyways that, that don't quite fit in with the rest of it. Katie, you, you, you duck into what appears to be half of like a store or building of some sort and half outside, almost like a, a little porch except it goes all the way through two walls. So it is sort of a a covered area, and you see benches and tables and crates all outside, some sort of loading zone that goes through all these walls. You duck into this. Uh, Ted, you round the corner, and you see that she has disappeared. Are there any, like, signs of where she could have gone, or is it, like... So there's there's three main directions. There's, There's an alleyway straight ahead of you. There's an alleyway to the left and an alleyway to the right. Go ahead and roll your first move here. Go ahead and observe a situation. I will observe a situation. So for the listeners, once again, our players will be performing moves. They each have attributes that will be added to these moves. They will be rolling 2d6 and adding anywhere between like minus 1 to plus 2, I think, is the max right now. And they'll get varying levels of success. If it's a 6 or lower, that is a complete fail. A seven to nine is a mixed success where there'll be a consequence that I will choose. And a 10 or above will be a complete success. So go ahead and roll observe a situation. That's a 10. A 10. Okay, so 
I don't have it pulled up, but let me pull it up right now. Plus zero, if that changes, you know, anything. It doesn't. Okay. <laughs> so observe a situation. So on a 10 plus, you get to ask two questions from this list. What is my best way through this? What currently poses the biggest threat? What can I use to my advantage? What should I be on the lookout for? What's being hidden from me? And what seems strange about this? I don't know if what is my best way through this is good. Cause well, I think what's being hidden from me. Way. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Might be might be a good choice for this situation. As you are, as you turn down this alleyway, you see one of the crates to your left down this canopied alleyway has been knocked over and you see that there is a soda can that is actively rolling out of the crate as if it has just been knocked over. Yeah, that'll do it. All right, running in that direction. Okay. You run down the alleyway and you peer behind one of the crates and you see pushed up against it the woman you had seen before. Show me your hands. Damn it to hell. She raises her hands. Go up behind, still kind of like wary, but putting her hands behind her back. You're under arrest. Oh, please. You can just let me go. Yeah, that's not how that works, lady. You're not going to ask me a single question before you put handcuffs on me? Yeah, well, we can sort out all that back at the station, but right now you were found above a dead body, so we're going to go back over there, see if you left anything out, and then I got some friends who are better talking than I am. Mm. Color me thrilled. You pull her in and start walking back down the alleyway the way you came. You have to shimmy around or step over the body of this woman who, Ted, you look down and see is certainly dead. You catch a glimpse of red marks along her neck. So you're just going to leave Nora here? Can I shove Katie's character onto the floor? Yes. I do. Yeah, I think think you're in a position of control here, and you, you shove her to the cobblestone streets. All right. What's your name? How'd you know this woman? My name is Annie, and uh, she needed my help. I only met her just a few days ago. You got a surname, Annie? Burn. Is it spelled the way I think? Do you think it's spelled B-Y-R-N-E? All right, so that would be a no. All right, Annie Byrne. Uh, So are you this god figure that's going around the place I live and leaving bodies almost every night? Please, you don't need to call me a goddess. I'm just someone looking out for the community. If you would loosen your grip on me, I could maybe get a better look at my friend over there and see if she's part of the same problem that you're likely trying to apprehend tonight. So you were helping the dead person, who you call your friend. It looks to me like you killed this woman, and I'm sure you can understand why. I'm trying to see if there was anything more I could do, but uh, no, I didn't kill her. Yeah, it looks like you've done enough. Annie, let's talk briefly about this woman. So as I said, this is Nora Ridley. She's 55 years old. You've only met her once before. It was two days ago, in the middle of the night. She came to your place of usual operations, begging for help. She explained her story, which is that she is in the Elysian District, not by choice. She is a gambling addict, in in so many words. She frequents the Black Light, which is the premier casino in the Elysian District. She had said that throughout the day, she felt as though she were being watched. She had an eerie feeling as though something constantly had eyes on her, no matter where she went, including back to her own home. She said she told a friend about this, and they wrote it off as though she was crazy. She felt 
as though not only were this a paranoia thing or someone was watching her, it felt like something she might need medical attention for, or at least that's what she claimed. And so she had come to you. She felt as though she were coming down with many symptoms of illness as well. Fever. She was. She had been vomiting. Severe headache. After looking at her for a while and trying to help her, it didn't seem like this was anything more than common paranoia on top of cold or flu symptoms. So you sent her away. You sent her back, unsure of how to help. And you have seen her now dead. Listen, sir, I think we got off on the wrong foot here. If you would just let me take a closer look at her, it would be really helpful, probably to the both of us. I could rule some things out, and um, maybe you'll be one step closer to catching this killer of men. All right, you can take a look. You're staying in cuffs, and you're not touching fucking anything, do you? Thank you. And Annie will get up and approach the body. Other than the marks on her neck, is there any other indication of struggle, of illness, of drug use? Go ahead and... I'll tell you some of this automatically because you do have medical expertise. Is this one of your advantages? I have uh, the scientist advantage, which I think we talked about before. So I think this would be your scientist advantage as you go over to inspect her symptoms or any signs of trauma to the body. First roll. Thirteen. 13. Wow. Okay. So that is a an ultra success. Not bad. So go I ahead and ask. know everything. You know everything. So go ahead and ask a couple questions on the list. I guess what what properties does this have? Could that sure. be more like- So yeah, we can talk we can talk about about physical signs on the body and then we'll talk about potential ways those could have manifested in a situation. So I'll give you this. You look at the body And you can tell with a decent level of assuredness, it appears she suffocated to death. The marks on her neck appear not to be from some sort of trauma or laceration on the neck or any sort of rope around her neck, but rather a swelling in that area that could come from any sort of suffocation, really. But it appears to be less external and more something that happened internally, perhaps. The other thing I will say is, well, what, okay, so that's that's sign, signs of death. What other question might you ask? Does she have anything out of the ordinary on her person? Okay. You check her belongings and you find a identification card for the Blacklight Casino you find a large number of pills that are unlabeled, but in separate bags. You find a set of keys and nothing else that appears to be out of the ordinary, no. Is there anything else I can glean from the body alone? You can glean that she has died very recently. As you feel how warm she is, at least in the last hour. All right. Thank you, officer. That was enlightening for me. I don't think Nora was murdered, necessarily, unless it was some strange agent that the killer themselves didn't need to be present. There's all sorts of lace drugs and things that people use. Um, by any chance, were any of the other victims, uh, frequent members of Blacklight, the casino? Would I know that? Ted, I don't I don't think you know this. You have not been formally assigned to this case. Mm-hmm. You might have taken a specific interest in it, but you haven't in fact, from what you know, nobody has been formally assigned to this case, at least nobody from your office, because the church has been 
very uptight about it. Mm. The church, at least in the Elysian district, has a higher level of authority than the district police do. And so they have not been letting anyone in to see the body that was said to have first died. And they have been keeping wraps on most of the other killings as well. So you don't know too much about the other victims. It's almost all rumor and hearsay at this point. Uh, no, I don't, I don't know if they're f- spending their money at the casino. Well, my friend here certainly was. What will happen to her body? Uh, well, we're gonna have to get a, I don't know, crew down here to check it out. I'm not a, I'm not a detective, so I've pretty much done my piece. And what a fine job you've done, officer. Now, I think we've kind of both done each other a favor here, and I don't believe there's any reason that I need to be escorted down to whatever precinct you came from. So, if I could just write some notes, I can send you along your way, and you can send me along mine. What do you think? That's actually a pretty good idea. Are you are you good at math, by chance? Sure. Fairly decent. Okay. Yeah, here's an equation for you. Me plus gun equals you dead if you try to run away. Pretty simple concept. Uh, yeah, you don't really get crime low by just letting the criminals fucking run away, so that's not really... I don't know what cop you're talking to, uh, but it wasn't this guy. So, no, uh, that's not... I, I applaud you for trying. Honestly, it was bold. But no, come on. We're going to the station. Sorry for assuming you don't do things by the book, Officer Knuckles. All right. Don't talk about my knuckles. Okay. Only I get to show them off. That's not for you to talk about. <laughs> All right, young lady. Uh, Annie Byrne. That's, that can't be real. That's got to be an alias, right? All right. You're right. We'll talk about word. it with the professionals. Come on. <laughs> and I'll start bringing her. Oh, no. And trying to move her. Oh, shit. Ted, you bring Annie through back through the labyrinth and carefully bring her back through this shimmy down alleyway that you came up through. Ted, you escort Annie out of the alleyway and into the main streets of the Elysian district. Out here, the nightlife is not as common. Most of the excitement is happening in sealed doors and down back alleyways. Here, the streets are quiet. Most of the houses and things, anything that is an actually solid structure, is elevated a bit. And most of them have stairs leading down to other establishments. You walk her through these cobbled streets down to the not-so-pristine building that is the district police station. You see that... The building is a small little rectangle, a low-rise, one-story office, set alone on the sidewalk. As you walk up, you see that the main doors in the entrance, all along the front wall, really, are made of glass. You walk in. There is only one other officer on duty right now. Officer Jetson is in there. You see he has this shaggy blonde hair that falls down in front of his eyes a little younger than you but just as sarcastic and and insincere as you walk in he looks up ted who's this yeah this is uh annie byrne founder above a body looks pretty damning to me but she checked it out and sounds a little weird but uh seems connected to this whole god business going on in the district wow this is bad news am i gonna have to question her man i really hope you don't have to do that but i think so god god fucking damn it all right ted we all right just send her back there and i'll I'll go meet her and god i've got paperwork to do All right, I'll start bringing her back. Okay. You bring her... Sorry. You bring her back past the desks. 
each officer has their own desk and against the back wall in a completely glass office you see chief clay's office he's not in right now as again this is the this is the night shift but you take her back to the left for questioning you sit her down in an almost entirely cement room and he looks nonplussed make yourself at home um this could take a while forever really if you just killed that woman so you know I didn't uh, just kill anyone. Don't you think it would be silly for me to investigate the body myself, give you my thoughts on it, and then walk down here with you if I had actually committed a murder? Well, let me jog your memory real quick. You only did that because your attempt at escape failed fucking horribly. Um, so that argument just kind of went out the window. You wouldn't have done any of that if I hadn't caught you, so... Yeah, but, uh, no, I appreciate the help, honestly. I'm not the best at, uh, you know, some of these things. But catching people, I do all right. The door slams Mm -hmm. open. Jetson walks in with a stack of files and a pen. Puts them down on the table. All right, this shouldn't take too long. Name? Annie Byrne. All right. Easy question. Did you kill the victim? No. All right, Ted, I think we're done here. We can, unless you, unless you want to, I think she's good to go. Yeah, uh, officer, I don't know if I'm convinced yet. Why don't you continue with the questioning? All right. It's just that I, I got some paperwork to do. <laughs> I Listen, Jetson, I don't, what fucking paperwork could be more important than a possible murderer? No, no, Please no, 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 me. no, it's all right. All right, all right, Annie. Annie, did you know the victim? Yes, I did know the victim. Her name was Nora Ridley. How did you know her? She came to my apartment a few days ago. She just needed some help from a neighbor. Right, what kind of help? She wasn't feeling well. Not feeling well, how? Well, she just needed someone to talk to. Um, She's... Had a difficult life, spent lots of money at Blacklight, and has a gambling problem, and she was feeling under the weather. What's in the back? My diary and some other personal effects that have no concern to you. Ted. Where have you? You Scrab- don't need to... Pour it out on the table? Yeah. <laughs> dump all the contents of the bag out onto the table. Katie, what what's in there? Uh, quite a jumble of things. Um, first is the journal that you felt, as well as a couple of pens. A first aid kit with some bandages. Um, there are a few needles in there, um, both for sewing up injuries and injections, but they did not poke you when you felt them because... Uh, They're all capped and safely stored. Uh, A scalpel, uh, some some other equipment, but no weapons. He sifts his hands through it, feeling around, looking at all of the items on the table, and he goes, so much shit, and I don't see a medical license in here, Annie. Maybe I just left it at home. Maybe you did mind telling me what sort of business you've been practicing in that apartment of yours? Odd jobs. Odd jobs. Oh, that's where that sentence ends? That that was the end of the sentence? I help my fellow members of the Elysian District when they need me to. All right, Annie, stay here. (sighs) Officer Garner and I will be back. Any gestures for you to walk out of the room with him, Ted? Uh, I'll grab the diary and then follow him. <sighs> you couldn't... Shuts the door. <sighs> Look, Ted, it seems like she's a medic of some sort. Probably was, honestly, looking at the body. I don't know, maybe we can just slap her on the wrist for unlicensed medical practice and then get her out of here. 
What do you think? Yeah, she seemed to know what she was talking about. She took a look at the body and gave me some info about it, but... Uh... Did you get a look at how it happened? How she died? Yeah, it, um... I mean, look, I'm not a trained medical professional, but from what I saw, it matched the same description that keeps coming up all the time. I didn't realize Clay put you on this case. And I was just on patrol. This isn't... I'm not, but... Well, you know, none of the bodies have been found by the district police. Other people in the office were starting to get suspicious that the church was just making it up. So maybe this will give us enough wiggle room to actually start looking into things. Yeah, well, if that's the case, maybe we should go recover that body before it mysteriously vanishes. Yeah, maybe so. And maybe Clay will be around in the morning. Maybe you should have a little more evidence. Maybe something a little more than someone standing over the body who you believe to be innocent. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. All right. Um, I'll tell you what, Jetson, you love your fucking paperwork, so... Take a read of this diary. Let me know if there's anything important in there. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes and <laughs> takes the diary. He sits back down at his desk. You see, he put he props his feet up on the desk and <laughs> relaxes back in his chair and props open that diary. Beautiful paperwork. <sighs> you walk back uh, in the observation yeah, room. Yeah. All right, Annie Byrne. Um... I'll be honest, your your story is starting to sound pretty okay. But uh, maybe you could help me out with something. And then we could talk about letting you go. What, we're making some kind of deal? Yeah, something like that. Look, uh, we're going to go back to the body, you and I, together. You're not going to get out of my sight. And if you really are innocent, we'll get along quite well. And uh, my possessions, can I get those back? Well, we're going to come back to the station after. You could get your medical supplies if you think it'll help, but diary stays here. It's really nothing I think you'd be interested in, just a record of the people who come and see me. Well, sounds like you have nothing to be worried about us seeing then. All right, let's go. You walk out of the room, and Jetson puts his feet down from the desk and goes... I was expecting something smuttier than this, to be honest. Garner, this is boring. Jetson, did you just say smuttier? Uh, here's your diary back. <laughs> he are you usually it back fucking you. jerking your dick on the job, or what are you... Garner, it's called paperwork. <laughs> I just... Alright. Um, I'll be Hearing honest, Jetson, the... you, got, you got me speechless. Hearing about the rashes and colds of the poor folks of the Elysian District doesn't do it for you? What is she still doing here? I don't... I'm sorry, Jason. We're getting the fuck out of here. I'll be back. <laughs> um, hopefully I don't die. Let me know if you find anything else about those other bodies. Where they're being held or what the hell happened to them. We'll be back. Where are you headed? Going to recover the body. Yeah, let's go right. back to the crime scene. Back okay. to the labyrinth. You head back through the labyrinth, trying to find your way back to where you were. You go down that alleyway, and you do not see a body. Well, I'm fucked. Seems we both are. I thought I had a lot more to learn about Nora's situation. Fucking Does there hell. seem to be any indication of who could have taken it? Where it could have gone? Did it go ahead and roll? Investigate. Investigate. Ten. Ten. Okay. Damn. I know these dice are really well. So you may ask two questions from this list. How can I find out more about what I'm investigating? What is my gut feeling about what I'm investigating? Is there anything weird about what I'm investigating? I get two. You get two questions with a ten. I'm gonna say, how do I find out more? And is there anything? Weird other than the body being gone. <laughs> okay. You look at the place where the body was, 
it doesn't seem like there's anything too, nothing too noticeable about, yeah, nothing weird here. It was probably picked up. Now, who picked it up might be weird, but no signs of that here. How you might learn more about this is by, well, quite obviously finding the person who picked it up or trying to deduce who picked it up. I think from what you've heard, you might find out more by seeing who knew her. The keys that you, did you take her belongings? I didn't say that I did, and I was cuffed at the time. So that's well, I think he kind uncuffed you up... to investigate it, no? No, he didn't. That's up okay. to Officer Knuckles over here. And I don't I don't think you took them. So you don't have the set of keys or the identification card to get into the blacklight. You might be able to pry your way into there. But a good way to start would be finding out who the friend she was talking about was, seeing who knew her at the casino, where she was today or two days ago when she started feeling this sort of sick that you couldn't identify. Another possible lead would be the church who seem to be covering up this incident as it's not unlikely that they're the ones, if they came across a body, it doesn't seem out of character for them to pick it up. Well, officer, the way I see it, we've got two options. We could try and find out what happened after our encounter and head to the church, though I don't think they'll be very forthcoming about any evidence. Or I could speak to a friend and see if I can figure out any connections that Nora had, maybe through the blacklight, and uh, figure out more about the days leading up to her visit to me. Yeah, let's, uh, let's go with option B for now. We don't need the church knowing what we're up to yet anyway. All right, follow me. And um, I will start walking back towards the direction of my place. Okay. Um, would I know... Well, I think I would, but uh, where where does Clara spend her, um, her time away from my home? Clara was at your apartment last you checked. She was crashing okay. there for a bit. So we'll head back there. Hearing about the hysteria within the Elysian district. Okay. You head back to your apartment. It is on the fourth floor, although the fourth floor has been recently added on to this building. In Not that there's too many great areas of the Elysian district, but this one is not particularly nice. In fact, to get to the fourth floor, you have to climb up the fire escape and go in through the window. You do that. Ted, you follow her in through the window. And what is what does the apartment look like? Um, yeah, it's definitely a shabby little place. It's got like one large room that makes up the kitchen and living area, um, a water closet, and um, like an offshoot to a small bedroom where Annie sleeps. There's a big couch, but the rest of the furniture doesn't match it. It's not dirty. It's actually really clean. It smells clean, but it's dingy. Whoever was here before her didn't take very good care of it. And um, people, people come in and out of here. So the couch is sort of set up like a bed, but it could be put away in a matter of seconds. Okay. You see on the couch lies Clara, unconscious, sort of one hand on the ground, one hand over the couch cushions. Um, officer, this is my friend Clara Moreau. She's, um, she's odd. But she knows a lot of what goes on uh, around the streets of our district. Just give me one moment, please. And I'll go over and sort of gently place my hand over hers. Clara. Oh, geez. Oh, Oh. Annie. Annie, Annie. 
thank God he came. I, 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 I've, had, I've, I've had a blistering headache all day, and I, I, I don't... Oh, God. I think I'm starting to see things. See things, Annie? Or see things, Clara? You see on the table next to her, there are three opened and empty bottles of pills. Just relax. I'm going to make you feel better, all right? Um, no, 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 Annie, Annie, Annie. Oh, no. My head, it just hurts so bad. I don't... Oh. I understand that you don't feel so good, but don't I take care of you? Yeah. Okay. Oh, who's your friend? Oh, I, I would have I would have put something nicer on if I knew someone was coming over, Annie. It's all right. He doesn't mind, right? This is my friend, Officer Ted. Yeah, Officer Garner. Garner. Ted, this is my friend, she, Miss Moreau. She pulls you over, Annie. Yeah, tell me, you brought a narc in here? It's a long story. But he's not going to do anything to shut me down, is he? You really help people in here? I guess you're about to find out. Um, and I go about sort of cleaning up Clara's mess, um, grabbing her uh, a cool washcloth and taking her to the water closet. Um, not to be too gross, but she's definitely got to get whatever's in her system out of it. So I'll give her something to yeah. make her sick. Okay. As you're, as you finished purging her system, you're getting her water. You're in this water closet alone as Ted. You sit out on the couch in the main room. Uh, I'm gonna take a little look around. Okay. There's also a chair. The couch okay. is usually for sick folks. We'll come back to you in one second, Ted. But mm -hmm. Clara goes, Annie. I think I'm, I think I'm seeing things. Tell me what you saw. Well, earlier today, I was walking back into the apartment. Um, then she looks behind you. Oh, God, Annie. What is that? What the hell is that? Oh, oh no. What the hell is that? What's over my shoulder? I turn. You turn. You hear the faucet leaking, dripping water ever so slowly. As you turn and look in the corner, there's nothing behind you. Okay. Um, I make sure to keep my composure. Um, Clara, it's all right. You don't need to look at whatever that is. You can look at me instead. Annie, it's like, it's like you. But, 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 but it's not you. Whatever it is, you've brought some evil in here. What's wrong with it? And he kind of reaches out of habit into her bag, but there's no notebook to grab, so she just listens. He first beat it back to you. Oh yeah, he did. Then she takes out her notebook and starts taking notes without looking down, without breaking eye contact with Clara. It looks like it's waiting and it looks like it's hungry Annie oh Annie I don't like this it's alright I understand you know which me is the real me right yeah Okay. you're the one in front exactly you know that to, thing to trust me it's always behind you always Annie, can we go back into the couch? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll walk her over. Um. You go out and Ted has picked up a book and is looking at it. Ted, go ahead and roll uh, Observe a Situation for me. Observe a Situation. Plus Perception. Well, we all know my bonus to that. Plus zero. Let's see what we got. Yo, 12. <laughs> Let's go. Good, good, good. Good stuff. Okay, so you can ask two questions from Observe a Situation. And 
if you use this information to act on anything that you get from these answers, you get a plus one to any rolls that have to do with that. But your questions are, what is my best way through this? What currently poses the biggest threat? What can I use to my advantage? What should I be on the lookout for? What's being hidden from me? What seems strange about this? You might also ask, like, what, since we're in a non-hostile environment here, you might ask something like, what do the things I see what sort of lifestyle do they allude to or what mm. can I gather about this person? Something of that nature or anything that you think fits that bill. Okay. I guess, uh, just for my own curiosity, can I ask like, cause Ted, I don't know if he's convinced quite yet. Like, does it seem like people actually are here for like medical help or is this just, gotcha. yeah, you, okay. So that, so that's one of your questions. What's, what's your other question? Let's do, what is being hidden from me? Okay. Okay. So as for the first question about medical help, you sift through Annie's belongings and you do find a couple other notebooks. She has this journal, but you find a drawer full of these things and you do find extensive records of people that she has helped so from that discovery alone, you can tell that unless she has pulled some incredibly elaborate scheme, she is actually helping people in this apartment. You can tell that the people are, a lot of them are there for extensive drug use, but some of them are there for more, more regular medical needs and just don't have enough funds to seek district approved medical help and let's talk about that now actually you both would know this let's talk about currency in heart there is only one denomination of currency that is approved by the city government the that denomination of currency is called runes a rune you know is a very large denomination of currency it is roughly the equivalent of about $10,000 in our modern world. The thing is, though, there is no smaller denomination in heart, at least none that is uh, sanctioned by the government. And so what the people have turned to in heart is a system of currency called, called troths. So troths are small coins made of a, a tin-like material. One troth is usually worth a meal, a small item, or a small favor. And so what troths were founded on, they were created by the people of heart, and they represent a future trust in someone else. They represent a debt owed to someone. The initial intention of them was to, co to codify the concept of returning things or favors owed within heart because for the people, especially those who were not as well off, people who weren't actively getting access to runes, trust and favors were a scarcity in heart. And so for them, that is a very real resource. Now they have evolved past that initial notion and have evolved into something more material where you might trade in a trough for something like a meal, something like paying for unsanctioned medical help, but you also still might see troths being traded in for favors on occasion. Annie, you have do not deal with runes anymore. These people have probably never seen a rune in their life. They they pay you in small favors if they pay you at all. Ted, you you earn a rune every half year. That is your salary as as one of those district police. Dang. I mean I seem rich right now, but you're saying in real world, that's like 20 grand a year is my salary? Correct. Understood. So it's certainly more than a, more of a salary than a lot of the people in this district for have. Sure, for sure, yeah. But it's not, I mean, yeah, you're not wealthy by any means. Mm -hmm. The second okay. question you asked was what was being concealed from you, right? Yes. I think, I, think I, I have an idea of something that is being concealed from him. And, and tell me if I'm, I'm off base with this. You walk out, Annie, and you see Ted has picked up 
a specific book on the bookshelf that you have intended not to be seen. This is a fake book. Ted, you see that it opens and reveals inside a an identification card for Annie that appears to be a medical license, and it expired uh, a, a few years ago. Is that right? Hmm. A few years ago? A few years ago. Her records, the ones that she keeps for herself personally, go back about three and a half years. This expired. This to line up with that. The, the, the date that you were supposed to get it renewed was two years ago. Mm-hmm. Annie, you walk back into the main room and you see Ted holding this book. Um, I'm sort of caught up, I think, with Clara. So all I do is shoot him a look as I try to lead her to the couch and find um, uh, a sleeping agent for her. Okay. Clara, I know that you're stressed right now, but I need your help with something really quickly. Um, do you remember Nora? She came in here two days ago. Um, she was complaining about some flu-like symptoms, and, um, yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 um, yeah, yeah, I remember Nora. Have you seen her around before or even after that? No. No. Okay. How I do are you remember feeling? Nora when you left the room to go get her medicine. She spoke to me a little. What did Annie, she say to you? Annie, she she had that same thing behind her. And that frightened you? Yes, it did. Can you remember anything else? Um I I, I remember she she had a hard time seeing things clearly. Mm-hmm. She said it was old age, but that she started feeling the effects of it. Said she felt like she was going blind. Did she mention that to me by any chance? No. It dep- Would you have conducted a vision test? I'm guessing not unless she mentioned something. No, I wouldn't have. Okay, then no. As we're speaking, I've been preparing an injection just something to help her sleep you've been very helpful clara thank you annie don't don't go to sleep alone tonight and she rolls over and goes to sleep well i get up and sort of dust off my skirt um and remember where i saw ted and moved to snatch the book out of his hands i i give it it's a bit private Sorry, you are uh, a guest in my home, and I put it back on the shelf. <clears throat> it's all right. I just wanted to make sure uh, you seem all right, Annie Byrne. Sorry about earlier. It's fine. Water under the bridge. Um, my friend here had a few odd things to say about Nora, but not necessarily about anyone she knew just some other symptoms that she wasn't sharing with me. I don't know if that's because she didn't trust me. It was only her first time visiting. Usually I build up something like that with a client, sort of like Clara here. Well, we can go over to the black light if you think that we're going to have some luck there. Or, I don't know, you feeling tired? Are you up to it? Please, with my work, my sleep schedule is completely unpredictable. I can stay up for hours. Why don't we head over there? Okay. You cool with letting her be here by herself? She'll sleep for a while. Um, I usually don't leave a patient when they're doing poorly, but Clara's been here for a few days now. She comes and goes. She should be all right. I'll leave a note. All right. Let's get moving then. Okay. You climb back down the fire escape and out onto the cobbled streets. It is well past midnight. The black light is open, but not particularly busy at this time of night. You head through past the brick wall 
that covers up the main part of the building and you hear thumping club music inside. It's sort of more like a speakeasy in that it's got a a front of a regular bar, but you know that behind the bar, they the bouncer lets people in who have a blacklight identification card. Which we don't have. Which you don't have. So you walk into the bar. You see that there are there's nobody sitting at the tables. They have a bartender there who you know is the bouncer, but he's cleaning glasses. There is only one person in here, and she is has her hands on her head, slumped over the bar, dejected. It's not clear if she's unconscious or drunk or, or sad or what's happening, but she is out for the moment. The bartender looks at you. Can I help you? Yeah, uh, just give me something on tap. He pours you one. Thanks, appreciate it. All right, um, so we got to get in the back, Annie. Is that the is that the play here? Yes, that's definitely where we're going to find anything strange that we're looking for, but I don't think either of these people owe me a favor. Someone here will. The girl s- slumped over. Can I just take a peek at her? She's like breathing, right? She's breathing. She appears to be... A, a little older than you would expect someone to be drinking in a bar by themselves at maybe two in the morning. You look over and her hair has started to gray and things of that nature. She's not old per se, but maybe a similar age to Nora. The bartender goes over to her and, and shakes her and goes, I already said, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. We don't know. We don't know who that is. And... We got guests now, so we need you to get out of here. And what seems to be see, the trouble, sir? Um, nothing. Nothing at all. Ain't no way. It's she, she slumps up, and you see that she has been crying. She goes, I appreciate the help. I'll be on my way. Let me know if... Anyone passes through, asking after her. Ma'am, can I ask who you're looking for? She looks back. You're one of the district police, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. I lost my friend. Your friend have a name? Nora. What's your name? Beverly. Beverly. I'm a friend of Nora's as well. I know she's in there. She has to be. She... I was with her, and then I wasn't. We got split up or something, and then, then I couldn't find her anymore. She's got a, a bit of a problem. We're getting through it, both of us, but... I know she's in there. And they won't let me in. Fuck. Bartender. Can I help you? Yeah. We want to go to the back. Right, I heard you were district police, no? Yep. Yeah, I'd recommend you get the hell out of my establishment. Look, we could do this one of two ways. Let me give you the options. Option A, I give you a little uh, get off scot-free pass for the next time you get caught doing something fucking stupid and you let us in the back. Option B stands for bloody. That's where I put my brass knuckles on, beat the absolute <laughs> living fuck out of you and make sure you can't continue that godforsaken bloodline. And then I force my way into the back. But I mean, I don't think your friend's like that. So why don't we go with option A? Go ahead and roll to influence other. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so that was horrible. <laughs> <gasps> mm. 
Uh, okay, so that's a four. A four. Okay, so a, a hard fail. That's a hard fail. He sees he, he just stares you down. This just cold face. And he goes, a threat from the district police. You know, I would almost take it seriously if your whole division wasn't a complete joke. Try dealing with the real crime here. Haven't you heard there's a murderer? Officer? Yeah, I'm looking into that. Step one is getting in that back room. Look, sir, if it helps any, I'm not district police. I'm just trying to trace the steps of a friend. He reaches I'm sure down you can... below the counter for something. Officer, and I mean this with all respect that is due. I need you to get the hell out of my establishment. Fine. I know when I'm not welcome. And are you moving to leave? I'm going to start backing away slowly. Okay. Don't do anything stupid. (laughs) Katie knows me extremely well. I do. I know you too well for this. Is he... I was I also clocking that he was reaching for something. Yes. How popping is the club right now? <laughs> it sounds popping. You don't know how many people are back there, but whatever music is playing, it's very it's loud, right? It's very loud. Yes. <laughs> it's like very but loud. From what you can deduce, it seemed. Oh, I see what you're asking. Yes, the music <laughs> is very loud. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. I'll start backing away, and I'll say, "All right, we're leaving." Um, any other words you want to get out before I head out? Yeah. Go tell Clay he can suck one. Yeah, I'm going to pull my gun and shoot him. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, 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 I thought you might. (laughs) Listen, this could be dumb, and I'll roll a new character. Go ahead and roll engage in combat. Oh, my God. Where, uh, where are you shooting him? Well, okay. How good am I? <laughs> you. Why don't you roll? Okay, great. Why don't you uh, roll engaging combat? That's better. That's a nine. A nine. So a mixed success. Oh, wait. Plus? Plus violence. That's an 11. Okay. That's a full <laughs> success. Okay, so you inflict damage to your opponent and avoid counterattack. So I think with that, if you're aiming for his shoulder. Yeah, yeah. He reaches down, and you see what he's what he's grabbing is a crowbar. And as he pulls it up over the counter, you shoot right into his shoulder as he screams out and drops the crowbar. Jesus! What the hell? <laughs> I was reaching for a crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> this is horrible. All right, I- well. I turn to Beverly and I usher her out. I say, "Okay, go home, run. Uh, and she, she's out the door. I mean, okay. hey. Is, so- is Ted following that up with anything? He's, he's yeah, looking yeah. at you just completely stunned. You just shot him. Yeah, so I'm going to jump over the bar so I can get close to him. Okay. But uh, I'm going to aim the gun at him, like, against his body, but below the counter so no one can see that I have, like, a gun to this guy. And just be like, look, buddy, I gave you the options. Really, this is on you. So are you going to let us in the back now, or do we have to do this again? Jesus Christ. Yeah. Just go in the... You fucking maniac. Go in the back. Appreciate it. All right, Annie. That was option B. <sighs> Indeed. I'm gonna... I won't get close or anything, but where he was shot, is he in any danger of bleeding out or anything? Probably not of bleeding out, but he's gonna be he's really shot. fucked up. Yeah. He's shot. So, I mean, yeah, if he got no medical help, probably that wouldn't be good. I'm so sorry. I didn't know that was about to happen. I am a doctor. 
I don't have any runes. I can't pay for it. No one ever can. Um... Ted, just give me... five minutes. Yeah. And I'll... work. <laughs> I'll do what I can. I'm not trying to make it look pretty. I'm not trying to do whatever. I'm just yeah. making it to the point where he can walk home. Yeah. He goes, rocking around with real scum, you know that? I'm not a fan of district cops, okay? But I've... I've got something I need to look into, and he's the only asshole who seems to be able to help me around here. Ask around if that gets infected. People will know where to find me. And I just get up and go to follow okay. Ted. Okay. Uh, Ted, as you open the door, a wave of sound and smoke hits you as this part was completely sealed off from the main entrance. You walk in and you see this main hall, which is bathed in a like purple neon glow. This is uh, this is this is one of the main distinctions between uh between the nightlife and like club scene in Heart and the outside streets which are typically um empty at, at least at this time of night as you as you saw but in here it's very much alive even well past midnight and the vibe is very neon there are signs and and strips of like purple neon lights on the wall and there are these large lamps of black lights over each table and uh there is music blaring i i i want to say it's some type of like like an offbeat synth or, or maybe maybe like a techno jazz playing over a system of some sort of like record player there are a bunch of card tables in this main hall and a large roulette wheel spinning in one of the corners. And you see, or what little you can see of the players' faces at the table, strike you as sleep-deprived. But for the most part, these, these neon lights create heavy shadows over all these faces. And there are these big trails of smoke coming from ashtrays at each of the tables. No one seems to take note of you entering. Yeah, definitely already have, like, gun back in the holster. And as Annie's following, I'll, I'll turn to her and just be like, even though it's loud, but I'll try to, <laughs> you know, not, you know, oh yeah. I'll try to say, regardless of the music, and be like, hey, um, I don't want you to think that I'm a fucking serial killer, so just know I, I try not to kill people unless they really deserve it, okay? I thought that was a pretty odd move considering you'd arrested me for investigating a body earlier but you know i i appreciate you giving an interesting bullet hole for me to fix yeah well when they start reaching for something it's hard to tell exactly what they're gonna pull out so you gotta prepare for the worst but i've heard that i nod to ted let's go in there sounds good to me Okay. Yeah, you go in and you the first table you go to has a woman with her hair completely tied up on top of her head. She's serving out cards. This appears to be some some equivalent to blackjack. Can I help you? All right, yeah. Uh <laughs> actually you can't. Any of you guys know a woman of the name Nora Ridley? Yeah, Nora, she comes in a lot. She was here today, I think. You saw her? Today. Yeah, she was just at that uh, table over there. Are there people at the table that is pointed out? Yes, this is a large craps table. Do you know when she left? Couldn't have been more than three or four hours ago. But you did see her leave? I guess I didn't, but I wasn't looking. No problem. Um, I think we'll join those folks over there. You go over to that table. There are only there are two men sitting at at, at the craps table, and one of them goes craps. I don't know what you're doing, craps. So I imagine it's like <laughs> Yachty. Yeah, uh, for sure. 
<laughs> you roll dice. You, you roll dice and you go, craps. And one of them goes, I, you hear you're looking for Nora? Is that right? Yeah, you know she, her? Uh, um, I mean, I guess we're acquainted. We're in this shithole together. Sure. Why are you looking for her? She and her friend ran into a little bit of trouble. They seem to have uh, lost their ticket into this place. And... Nora lost her ticket in. Shit, she's got three or four backups at this point. Well, I think she had quite a bit to drink this evening. All right. I mean, that doesn't sound like Nora. No? No. But hey, you're the one looking for her. You know more about her than I do, apparently. I mean, I don't know about that. You were, uh, she was at this table, right? And you guys were talking, hanging out? She acting weird, say where she was going or anything? No. Home, she said. Did she seem ill at all? Seemed like she needed some sleep, yeah. Don't we all? She came in with her friend, uh, Beverly, I think. No one else was with them? No, just the two of them. Can I maybe read a person yeah. and see if he's trying to cover or anything like that? Please do. Oh, okay, that's not bad. Eleven. Jesus Christ. I'm, We're effective. I, I was going to get new me. dice, but I don't know. You guys are killing me. So read a person. So you may ask two questions to this person. Out of character, but are you lying? How do you feel right now? What are you about to do? What do I? What do you wish I would do? How do I get you to blink? I'm going to choose. Are you lying? And what do you wish I would do? I think he wishes you would leave. I think that's the that's a big <laughs> one. They seem he seems sure sleep that. deprived, and you know when you've pulled an all nighter and you want to keep playing or doing whatever you're doing but at the same time it's the worst thing you could ever be doing that's about how he feels right now is he lying no he's not no he's not lying per se he doesn't seem to be telling you everything but who Damn. whoever does um i also don't know how craps works so does he have like a <laughs> His equivalent of chips, does he have like money on the table or anything? Yeah, he has a couple troths in front of him. Do I have troths on me? Yeah, you might. Okay. Um, hey, buddy, we don't mean to make you uncomfortable. We just want some information and then uh, you're looking pretty sleepy. You should probably head home soon and I'll put a couple troths on the table. Yeah, all right. What else do you want to know? Look, your friend Nora... She got hurt pretty bad tonight. We're trying to find out how that came to be. So can you just tell me any and all things that happened involving her when she was here? She said she was scared of something. Like something was going to come out and get her the minute she was alone. That's why she brought her friend, she said. And then they got split up. They left together. All right, is that uh, anything else we should know? Nope. I'm feeling a bit sleepy. I think maybe I should head home. We are too. Um, thank you so much for your help. Um, hope you've had a lucrative night and I'll kind of uh, pull Ted's uh, sleeve and start walking back the way we came. Okay, you head out are you leaving the black light yeah damn we should not have sent beverly home <laughs> no we fucking shouldn't have that's all right um we're uh we're walking and talking well annie i'll be honest um beverly seems like our best lead and i have no fucking idea where she is only other thing we have is the church option and the fact that apparently you shouldn't go to bed alone, whatever that means. Well, listen, I know Clara's not in the 
best state of mental health, but it's odd. She said, she said Nora had a shadow, sort of something that looked exactly like her, but wrong over her shoulder when she came to see me. She said I had the same thing. I obviously don't believe that she truly saw some sort of demonic entity. I don't think it really is God going around and killing people, as the church would have us believe. But I think, I think we should, maybe we should trust her gut. We're going to trust the gut of someone who has to be medicated to not see things? She's stayed alive out on these streets for a long time, and that's an impressive feat. Listen, I'm not questioning that, but uh, if someone told me that like a demon was stalking me, I'd kind of just laugh in their face. There's, there's no such thing. No, but maybe some sort of illness that I haven't been able to detect. She didn't choke. She suffocated, but there didn't seem to be anything... No no rope, no handprints. Sure, sure, but, I mean, it's gotta be something we're not seeing. Only explanation for it. Right. Alright, so let's recap. They came here together, they were here for a while. Nora's here all the time, but she felt afraid today, so she brought a friend. Then they get split up along the way. Beverly thinks she's... Nora's still inside, but then somehow Nora ends up dead in an alleyway decent ways from here. She wouldn't choose to be alone if she was that afraid. Something, someone must have taken her attention enough for her to leave. Annie, you... Here's something. As you all are walking out of the black light, you step out of the the bar that is the front to the casino, and you see something over your shoulder across across the street on one of the dark alleys. And you look, and you don't. You see this glint of something, and it's not there anymore. <clears throat> I think this business might be getting to my head a bit. Just a strange feeling. Can we at least go back to my apartment? Sure, yeah. Let's go back. Nothing I better to might do. Also, I might also just need sleep. Um, Maybe after this... Maybe after a rest, we can either look for Beverly or start poking at leads at the church... I'm not sure. I mean, the question is how... How closely do you want to be involved on this? Because I guess this is kind of my... I mean, at this point, it's above my pay grade, but it's kind of my job, but you're you're a civilian. It's... It's fascinating. There's something wrong with these people. I, I mean, right? Something that we don't understand. Yeah, that's true. Up to you. Are we you... almost home? <laughs> oh yes. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're heading back to your apartment, you you climb the fire escape back up to your apartment, Annie. You open the window, and you see Clara sound asleep on the couch. We've kind of starting to reach a dead end for the night. It seems like. You she you see Clara stirs. Annie. Yes, I'm back. Oh. You know, I had a bad dream, and then something came back to me. Something something Nora said the other day. Good, good. I take out my journal. She said she saw the first real dead person she'd ever seen. Mm -hmm. She rolls over and goes back to sleep. Dude, I just got ringed! I note that down and close the journal, tuck it back in my bag, pull the blanket up to Nora's, or to Clara's chin. Well, Officer Knuckles. 
Yeah. Do you plan on continuing your search this evening? I, I don't know. Um, it Did that last thing mean anything to you? Like, she saw a dead person? She in a graveyard or something? I doubt it's anything of consequence. I'm sort of known to take in strays, so if you'd rather stay close, um, I can always take the chair. I've slept in it plenty of times. Uh, no offense, but if you want to just meet back up in the morning, that's probably prefer that way. Fine. That works for me. Um, Labyrinth again? Yeah, that works. Let's, uh, try to keep this quiet for now until we know what the fuck is going on. My entire job is discretion, officer. Yeah, guess you're right. Alright, well, you got Clara, so I guess you, uh, won't be going to sleep alone tonight. Hopefully that means you'll be fine from the fucking, what, ghost or whatever you think's going on. I don't believe in ghosts. Have a good night, sir. You too, Miss Byrne. Ted, you head back through the streets on your own and head back to your apartment. You open the door. It is late at night, and Grace is sitting in a chair in the front room. T- Ted? Hey, hon. <sighs> Clay called like six times. Yeah? What do you say? He wants you to come in first thing in the morning. Uh, I can never catch a break. He didn't sound happy. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm sure it's nothing. Nothing to stress about. You seem scared, Ted. Um. Yeah, I don't. Can't hide anything from you. Um. Something came up. Uh, I mean, we're about to head to bed. How much you want to hear about it? You can tell me in the morning. I'm tired. You want anything to eat before you go to bed? I ate without you. Sorry. Yeah, that's all right. I work some shit hours, so I get it. All right, let's head in. Okay. You need to turn in with Grace. You fall sound asleep, comfortably, next to someone else, but somewhere else in the Elysian district. Annie, you hear something out the window that you realize Ted left cracked open as he left your apartment. Annie, 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 come help out on the fire escape. I slowly get up. Hello? Annie? Annie, come help. Out here. Who is it? Please. What's wrong? They said you knew how to help. I do. Come inside. I can't. I venture... Over? Um, do I have a light of any kind, even like a lantern or something I can light? Yeah, you have a lantern. I'm, I'm gonna light that on the way and just stick my head out the window and nothing else. (laughs) You stick your head out the window and the lantern doesn't seem like there's anyone out here. See the lantern flickers. You must be hearing things. You pull your head back from the window and close close it, setting the lantern on the windowsill. And as you turn back towards your apartment, your shadow on the floor has an eerie white grin 